What's going on, Flow Combaters? This is your man, Obo Seeps Dwayne Finley, here with the big gobble, the, the double H, the game, the don't call me Zordon, Zordon Power, Blue Power Ranger. <laughs> Hunter, Hunter Hobostack uh, here for our morning, afternoon, evening, everyday update. So uh, we survived Thanksgiving, and if you're here, then you survived it too. We also survived Yin's Giving, which is our first annual Finley uh, Homestack Families mashup meetup. It was a great time. It was our flow combat Thanksgiving, if you will. Uh, it was good to see you, big man, and uh, and thanks for the birds. Oh, yeah, man. Same to you and the fam. It's always great seeing you guys. It's funny, I think, the way we, we work kind of remotely, how it feels like we know each other so well and we see each other all the time, but really we've seen each other physically in person like four times in our lives. So it's always, it's always cool to get that and, and to your family's obviously awesome. Everybody sees them all, all over Instagram and Twitter, but just so you all know, it's no smoke and mirrors, man. His kids are really as cool as they look. His wife's really as cool as she looks, even if she doesn't book <laughs> murder hotels. So uh, it's all... It's all legit. It's all real when Bo's involved. So anytime you get a chance to cut it up with them in person, always, always a great time. And I want to throw this back to you because you can talk about how awesome my family is. Your family is is super awesome as well. It, and it's it's no wonder where you come from. You see how a tight knit family like that. I mean, your sister's a doctor for goodness sake, uh, and your old man's awesome, and your mom talks as much as I do. So you know, like I, you know, I love her. Um, <laughs> But and then your your girl Nicole also you guys you guys uh, put on a, a a great a great feast for us and it's it, it's a nice start to a new tradition and we'll get on to another tradition I'm a segue king man yeah. um, interim titles that's like the new thing it's like uh, interim's the new uh, skinny jeans yeah <laughs> I'm down with that yeah yeah I'm cool with that they <laughs> they both suck and they're both here. <laughs> You heard it from the Double H. But yes, so over the weekend, if you were sleeping or in a turkey coma, the UFC decided to hand out yet another interim title. But this one's a little more interesting. It's not like, um, you know, the interim welterweight or interim 205. This one actually affects their biggest star in Conor McGregor. Uh, I believe it was Ariel Hawani from MMA Fighting broke the news uh, this last week that Daniel Cormier was hurt and out of his fight against Rumble at 206. That takes the biggest fight off of that card in Toronto. So what the UFC does, instead of just bumping up Holloway and Pettis and making that, hey, a good fight and people will watch, they think it's going to add some t type of marketing value by making it a title fight. So they make it an interim title fight, and then they uh, that would make – but since the featherweight division already has an interim champion in Jose Aldo, that means they had to strip – champion conor mcgregor of his 145 pound title making aldo the undisputed making interim for pettis and uh uh and holloway what do you think about this chaos man is it too much chaos for you way too much chaos man my mind's blown <laughs> by all this i mean we i think it was the very first morning update ever actually we we mentioned pettis versus holloway as like a great fight the lost tapes. yeah it was a, it's part of the lost <laughs> tapes that i don't know ever actually got published a test run the pilot but yeah we, we said that and then the fight <laughs> happened so everything i'm about to say has nothing to do with that matchup it is a completely badass matchup that we've been wanting to see for months amazing fight now that said an interim title doesn't make this fight sell much better how many more buys does that really add i mean this fight <laughs> 10 10 <laughs> not 10,000 just 10 but uh yeah i mean you could make this fight for anything you could give you could let the winner get a castle on a deserted island and still it wouldn't break 300,000 buys i mean it's a bad card now and that's what happens when you load up ufc 205 as good as that was it it was at the expense of 206 and 207 is loaded so that one in the middle gets kind of crushed, and we saw that with UFC 200, 201, and 202. 201 was pretty weak on paper. Now that said, it was a great card in execution, so I'm not saying that 206 is going to be a bad card. Could very well have some straight-up fire fights, and it probably will with Holloway and Pettis because, like I said, that matchup is insane. But the whole situation, it got totally borked, mate. Literally Lit. borked. Lit. <laughs> Any reference? <laughs> But yeah, I, I just don't understand their line of thinking. So now Connor becomes the first simultaneous two division champion in, in the UFC's history, and then they strip him of one of the belts before he even gets to fight as the two division champion. So from the marketing a angle, I don't understand. I, I'm just I'm truly baffled by this. I don't get you. 
Connor creates history, makes history in doing it, and then you take away history before he gets a chance to really make a mark with it. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth on that front. Aldo becoming the real champ, again, nobody's fooled by that. Nobody thinks that Aldo suddenly like leapfrogs McGregor in the featherweight standings and, and, unless McGregor officially says, you know, I'm never returning to featherweight, in which case we'll have to accept it. But still, McGregor knocked him out in 13 seconds, so who's fooled by that, really? Um, yeah, it, it's crazy. But the winner of, of Holloway Pettis versus Aldo is another great fight, and it's cool. But you can't help but feel that that got botched from the get-go. And... You stripped McGregor because Daniel Cormier got injured, essentially, is what happened. How crazy is that chain of events? Does that make any sense? Even you, the lover of all things chaos, has to find that a little extreme. And, and you're exactly right. I mean, I love, I am a, uh, a connoisseur of chaos, and even that ripple effect, I can't put together. Like, that's like a, a, a butterfly flaps his wings in Japan, and Conor McGregor loses a, a title, but... <laughs> You, you brought up a good point that, that I didn't think of to, to listen to you talk that the UFC took away history from Conor McGregor, but did they also is this also an attempt to take away leverage for Conor McGregor? Because, you know, we've heard in circles uh, for the, uh, pretty much since he won the belt that Conor was never going back to 145. That said, it's just rumors. I mean, until Conor comes out and says he's not doing it, then – but the UFC, uh, you know, trumped his hand there, saying that, okay, well, now it doesn't matter if you come back to 45 because – we're giving this belt to this guy you leveled in 13 seconds. I mean, that's the hard part to swallow. And I do want to clarify that I think Max Holloway should have been given a title shot or an interim opportunity a long, long time ago. So I have no qualms with that. What I have qualms with is Connor being stripped and given to Aldo and then Anthony Pettis getting a title shot. It blows my mind. I don't care if he was a 155-pound champion. I don't. It's, he, he, ha he hasn't looked great in the last two years. He hasn't. So... You know, I think, um, you know, Holloway would have been a good fight for him to to prove that. But then again, interim titles just don't matter. I mean, I, I think the last one that mattered legitimately was the one that Condit held. And that's not me speaking bias because he's my dude. I think that was an important fight because of everything that was happening with GSP being out. And then Condit, you know, Condit beat Diaz. That was a great fight for an interim title. And they come back and they had an epic, um, an epic fight. To, uh, to merge the title. So I love when that happens. This is bullshit. And anything else, and what's great is that's why I love Twitter and MMA fans so much because you guys are so smart and the UFC does not give you credit for how smart you are because as soon as they hit, so that, that news hit, social media is like, oh, horseshit. It's bullshit. You know, even I, who am trying to blend in with my background today, even I think, even my flannel thinks that's bullshit. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. And do you, well, let me ask you, Hunter, do you think the, there's any any grounds to what I said, you know, my conspiracy bow about, uh, you know, that maybe this removing that belt from Conor is a leverage move heading into, especially after the things he said about demanding equity stake and, you know, how he goes forward? I can certainly see it as that, but I also think it's a pretty poor play on their fault, on their part, if it is, because I just, I don't see how much more leverage that really gives them. Okay, he's not technically a two-division champion anymore, but who is he fooling when it comes contract time? Are you convinced that Connor still isn't going to strut around with two belts all the time and say he's the champion anyway? It's not going to change anything on paper. It only changed things on paper and in reality and in Connor's world, which is where it matters. He's still the two division champ, and I guarantee he's going to let them know that. So I, I find it funny how quiet Connor's been through all that. I don't know if it's his lawyers telling him to stay quiet or if he's just crafting the appropriate response or what, but I cannot wait to hear what he has to say about all this. Well, and then, you know, one final thing is Jose Aldo looks terrible. Jose Aldo stamped his feet. Oh, I didn't get the title shot. Oh, I'm leaving. I'm retiring. And now, oh, well, stay. You get to be the real champ. I mean, I mean, Jose's worked too hard and had touched uh, too great a legacy. I mean, one speed bump. And now, I mean, it's all turned since McGregor. McGregor really does uh, predict these things. So uh, on a closing note, before we go, uh, we did break a little bit of news today from Skinny World across the pond. It looks like a light heavyweight bang em up between Glover Teixeira and Jimmy Manawa is, tar is being targeted for UFC 208. Uh, nothing official, but uh, we have uh, confirmed a source is close to the bout multiple sources that this fight is going down they're about to throw them dangs in uh, anaheim and there's no way the violent sleeps aren't caught what do you think hunter about this matchup and 
more so, what do you think it means now in the bigger picture at 205 since we pretty much agreed uh, at Yen's Giving that this thing's falling to shit since DC and uh, Rumble fell out? Yeah, I, I got about three concussions just when I heard that Manoa versus Teixeira was targeted. Man, that's a, without a doubt, a bang them up, rock them, sock them, fireworks, cliche, insert it here, match up. <laughs> they're, they're virtually <laughs> identical. Super explosive. I mean, you look at these guys, Manoa's loss to Rumble and Gustafson, I believe that's it in his career, and Teixeira's loss to, to John Jones, yeah, and Rumble, so it's like, these guys only lose to the best of the best guys, so it's it's that perfect fringe, I might challenge for the champ belt, you know, it's like, I, I might be ready for the championship belt uh, matchup to, to eliminate which guy is really for real to get back at it, and... 205 is such a messed up division, man, because even the winner of that fight, I I personally, I don't feel like they have a chance against Rumble or Jones or Cormier. It's like those three, and then everybody else, and Gustafson, not even sure what's going on with him right now either, man. He hasn't quite looked himself either, so I'm not sure where he falls into play, but it's, it's a clear division of the top three and everybody else in my mind. So while this fight is crazy exciting, don't get me wrong, I'm snagging my popcorn for it, and I'm all, I'm all pumped about it. I don't see the winner really becoming the champ or, or making a really strong case for the championship after that. But Manuel was a little younger, a little fresher body, I feel like. So so that makes it a little fun. Uh, teixeira has got the better ground game, the better grappling for sure. But if it stays on the feet, man, it's, it's pretty pretty even to me. And I can see either guy getting the sleep. So, so that's really exciting. It's a great fight, man, for sure. And UFC 208, we haven't heard many bouts announced. I don't. Is this the only bout we've heard targeted for that so far? Anything else? Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, it's a pretty good foundation to build something on. Definitely not a main event, but it's it's about that I'm tuning in for. You know what would make this bout awesome? Hit me. An interim title. Ah, get out of here. I should, I should stop the recording right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be great. Got it. It'd be great. There, there are two guys who, you know, may not probably win the real title, but... Uh, we we have a pay per view we have to sell, so we're gonna put an interim on it. I mean, the interim knockout sleeps champion. What do you think about <laughs> okay. that? I'm good with that. That's one I can get pumped for. I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> and now, since he's good with it, and you guys got to be good with it, and I'm good with shutting this thing down for the day. So thank you for tuning in. As always, catch up tomorrow at Flow Combat with new shit, new exclusives, hot your streets. That's my DJ uh, K Slay, I think. What is yeah, or drama, whatever it is. But we will be back again tomorrow.